Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Adam Habib, who is advisor to the board of Amur Minerals. How are you today, Adam? I'm doing very well, thank you, Zach. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing okay. I was. Uh, Elon Musk is one of my heroes, and probably uh, given the share price of Tesla, uh, quite the, the hero of many other people as well. Uh, but he did note, and he, there was a sort of call to arms last month regarding. Uh, nickel, which is obviously used in EVs, electric vehicles, uh, for nickel producers to uh, step up, uh, step up uh, to the plate, and you know get on producing. Uh, you have this uh, large asset in Russia. Um, how are you getting along with that? Yeah, so we're making great progress um, with that, and obviously, uh, you know, p- part of what we're trying to achieve is is to make sure that the company grows up too. So he's quite right. You know, we've got to grow up, and we've got to get our act together. And, you know, that's really what we've been working on uh, in earnest for for some time now and um, getting enough money and revenues to be able to deliver that asset is exactly what we've been doing. And obviously, that's the recent capital raise and investment that we've made this week. Right. So, I mean, Elon is looking for nickel and Kunmani is one of the the, the biggest nickel uh, assets in the world. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So, so it's uh, it's the second largest nickel mine in Asia, and we have over 1.5 million tons of nickel in situ. And once we get into production, we should be uh, producing, you know, some very decent numbers of nickel on a per annum basis. Right, and the the latest um, move into iron ore is uh, counterintuitively a move in 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 order to help you uh, uh, develop that project. Yes. Yeah, so, so what it does is it, it makes us a grown up company. So we have revenues and income. And then on top of that, it diversifies our um, base, allowing uh, institutional investors to find us attractive and invest into. So that's the whole point. And one of the institutions that you've been, uh, let's say, working with or alongside in terms of uh, the iron ore asset in Australia is, is Glencore. Um, and I mean, it, it, what can uh, investors expect down the line in terms of that relationship? Yeah, so I've been working um, obviously with Denko uh, for some time. Um, I've known them for many years, and obviously part of that was uh, was you know driven by the you know that relationship got us into this deal. Um, we hope to obviously you know keep working with all of the majors um, to try and get the best solution for. Um, Kunmani and the nickel sulfide uh, that we can produce. So, um, so you know whether it's, it's Glencore or not, um, you know, we think that we have a very attractive asset, and we know that you know a lot of the majors are going to be interested in our mine, our nickel sulfide because it is you know one of the largest mines of this state. It's it's kind. So. And the I mean that was sort of the calculation is the mass is that let's say once uh, Roper Bar the iron ore asset is. Uh, Fully up and running, you'd uh, aim or be getting roughly a hundred million dollars uh, a year from that. How much of a contribution would that make to Kunmani in terms of the development? Yeah, so to, if we were to get a hundred million dollars uh, uh, per annum in, in dividends from um, Roper Bar, then you know that's uh, about a fifth of the total capital that we need uh, to develop it. And if you, you look at it on that basis. It makes us, uh, uh, or gives us, the ability to borrow and to also raise additional equity, thereby maintaining the ownership of the Kunmani mine. So we would then end up, you know, owning a lot more of that mine when it gets into production than if we didn't have the Roper Bar revenue. And I mean, you're you've been around the block in terms of the mining sector for quite a while. Um, you've got a twenty million pound market cap roughly on Amur at the moment. Uh, the hundred million dollars. Uh, annually, uh, it was sort of uh, mooted to come in uh, o- over the near term. Uh, how long do you think it will take for the uh, a re-rate of the of, of the of Amor in ter- you know in terms of the uh, flow of those revenues kicking in? I mean, I, I think uh, as soon as we start um, shipping ore from Nathan River Resources uh, Ropa Bar in Australia, I think people will start realizing um, that. Uh, you know, this really is now a producing business. It's got you know ores that it's selling, and at that point, I think the re re rate should happen. So, uh, as per the plan, uh, we hope that that happens in the next few months. You know, the first um, first shipments are due imminently. 
Okay, and just finally, um, you, you've got Roper Bar, uh, you've got Kun Mani. Is, is there any chance or any prospect of you uh, uh, trying to snap up any other assets which might help the Amor cause? Yeah, so to, if we see something um, which is as good value or better value than, than, than Roper Bar, we'd be very keen uh, to get involved. Um, you know, we think we, we got a, a, a very, very good deal in Roper Bar. And that should add a significant amount of value uh, to our stakeholders. Um, and as I say, I think if, as soon as we see the first shipments flow, people will realise how attractive uh, an opportunity this is. Adam Habib, uh, advisor to the board of AMO Minerals, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Zach. Appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.